This is Dave, the guru, and another tutorial using Game Salad. In this video, we're going to start to implement physics and bring in our ball actor and get it moving around. So one of the first things we're going to want to do is come down and grab our ball actor, drag it up into the actor's palette. I checked out the size, and we're going to keep the size the way it is. I like it. So one of the first things we're going to want to look at when we go inside here is we're going to open it up and we're going to open up the physics tab and we're going to look at come down to the collision shape and we're going to see that right now it's set to rectangle and since this is a circular object we need to go ahead and change it to a circle so we get the proper physics responses so now that we've done that let's just go ahead and back out and let's go up to the scene tab here where we access the scene attributes and we're going to go ahead and we're going to come under the gravity on the Y and we're going to go ahead and change that to a little bit and we're going to increase it to 500. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead back over here and let's just drag our ball out here for a second and we'll preview it and we'll see what happens. We see that our ball drops and it goes right through our walls. That's because the computer, we haven't told it yet, we haven't told the ball which objects it is going to collide with and which objects it isn't going to collide with. Now pretty much we're going to have this thing collide with everything we have on our scene. But there would be instances where you would want something to collide with certain things and not collide with others. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. I'll show you one way which is kind of the long way and then I'll show you the easy way. So we would come over to the behaviors and basically what we would look for is our collision behavior or our collide behavior. We would drag that in there which really allows us to select an actor individually. So we could say our wall but we also need it to collide with our paddle. So we'd have to select that and also while we're in here we can select it and if we hit the option key we can drag down and get another one and we would say well we need you to collect with the with our bricks and so we've got a bunch of collide behaviors in here and the more we can streamline our code in here the better off we are so let's just go ahead and get rid of all this stuff and I'm going to show you how to group these all together so that we can use them in one behavior so we're actually going to go up to the home button here and we're going to go over to this actors tab here and in here is what's called the tag section and this can be used for a variety of purposes but I'm going to basically show you how to create a tag and then how to group actors under that tag so we're going to come down here to this plus icon we're going to click it and that's going to make a new tag and we're going to go ahead and name it collide So now we're going to go back up to our all and we're going to drag each item that we want to collide. When we see the arrow there, we can drop it and it's going to put it into that aspect, into that tag. So we're going to drag all three of these things into that tag under collide. And when we go in here, we under collide, we see we've got our three objects that we want to be tagged as collide. So now let's go back to the scenes tab back into our scene and we'll go back into our ball actor and now what we can do is grab that same collide behavior and drag it in but now instead of actor of type we come up here and we can select actor with tag and there's our collide tag so now we've narrowed this down to one block of code that we're going to use to collide with so now when we hit preview we'll see that the actor now collides with our walls and it's going to collide with our paddle but we really don't have very very much velocity on the ball we've got some bounciness on there and one of the things that we could do is we could come in and we could go to our paddle and we can increase the bounciness now bounciness only goes up to two two is the max so now we're going to get into putting in some decimal places when we do some of these things so we'll do a let's do 1.3 and actually bounciness is pretty sensitive so you want to make sure that you know you work in small increments as we'll see so let's go ahead and let's see what uh, 1.3 gives us it gives us much more bounciness 
but now see all of a sudden now our ball starts to really get out of control and is just really speeding up exponentially we want we don't want that to happen we need to deal with that so let's go ahead and deal with that first so we're going to go back into our ball actor and we're going to come in under this motion tab and you can see here we have a max speed that we can check so we're going to check that max speed and now it's going to tell the ball don't go any faster than whatever we put in this max speed column here so let's go ahead and do a max speed of let's do 1200 so we're going to do a max speed of 1200 and we'll back out and we'll see how that does and so as you see now our ball is much more controlled and we won't we don't get that uh, kind of exponential growth in our speed so we've got kind of a decent thing going on here but you, as you can see it's really tricky to kind of bounce the ball um, on an angle it kind of wants to stay straight and we really don't we, we need a little more angle or we'll never be able to get those balls on the side so one of the things we're going to do with that is we're actually going to do a little more math and we're going to do a little vector to angle calculation. But in order to do that, we actually have to figure out the vector from the paddle in between the paddle and the ball. So we need to know the paddle's position when it strikes the ball in order to be able to do that calculation in the ball actor. So what we need to do basically is get the information contained in this actor of its position and transfer it to the ball actor. And we actually do that by using what we call game level attributes or game level variables, which is a place where we store information globally so that all the other actors or any of our other code can read that information or transfer that information from one actor to another. So we're going to go ahead under this main attributes tab here and we're going to go down and we're going to click this plus icon and this is going to give us a selection of different types of variables or attributes that we can use now don't get overwhelmed with all of this right now i know this all seems overwhelming but just go with the flow and as you go you learn all these things and it really becomes second nature so let's just try to stay focused on what we're working on and you know don't get overwhelmed so we're gonna go ahead and what we want to do is we want to select a real attribute and the reason why we want to select a real attribute is because a real attributes use decimal places so and we want those small numbers in relation to position of things So we're gonna choose that and then we're gonna go ahead and we'll make another one it's already selected to real and we'll hit choose and then we're going to go ahead and rename them and we'll call this paddle X and this one we'll call paddle Y now we've made our attributes and that's great but we need to get that information from the paddle into these game level attributes and then back to the ball so to do that we're going to go ahead back into our paddle actor and we're going to grab a couple of constrained attributes and we use constrained attributes because basically what we're doing is we're directly linking two oops two variables or attributes together so what we're going to do is we're going to link our game paddle x attribute or variable to the paddles position x so now essentially what we've done is we we're taking the information from the paddles x position and linking it directly to our game paddle x which means this piece of information will consistently and constantly be updated in other words these two values will now be identical at all times so we're gonna go ahead and do the same for the Y position 
uh, paddle y our uh, game y and then our paddle position y now the reason why I stuck these at the top of the stack is because the way code fires or goes logically in game salad inside an actor is from top to bottom and so we want this information to be as consistently updated as we can so we always try to put these types of of exchanges of information at the top of the stack to make sure that that information gets put in there first in case we might be doing other things with that information uh, down in our code stack all right so now we've done that and we're going to go ahead into our ball actor and we're going to get that information so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use some rules so we're going to go ahead down here and we're going to go ahead and grab a rule now how rules work is they're really kind of like switches in your house or or like the key in your car as i talked about they 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 tell information when and when not to be executed so you can see we're going to use when all conditions are valid and in here in this section is where we do our conditions okay so if we wanted to add more conditions we would come up here and check a box and we get rid of them but we're just going to use one condition and so what we're going to do is we're going to say when actor receives the event overlaps or collides with the actor paddle so we're telling this rule when this event happens go ahead and do this code execute this code that we're going to put inside here so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go get grab a change velocity So now what this is going to do is really it's going to change the velocity or the direction of the ball based on a vector calculation of how exactly the ball which is a rounded surface is striking it so don't get too overwhelmed with the calculation we're going to do here once you start working with this stuff it really becomes second nature as I said there is some math and there really is some study involved as vectors and things like that in relationship to movement in games are pretty critical the forum on game salad is filled with a lot of great information um, already about how to do these things a lot of time it's just a matter of learning the expressions and they're kind of interchangeable and the forum is just filled with some really great math wizards who have really provided all this content for you and a lot of times you can just find the information and plug it in even if you're not the greatest at vector math like me I'm not uh, more of a logic guy so we're gonna go ahead down and we're gonna do vector to angle and we're gonna just back up to the first bracket and so what we want to do is find the vector to angle on the X at first between the ball position X and then we're gonna minus our paddle position which we're gonna grab through our game attribute since we can't access the paddle directly through here and then we're gonna put a comma to separate this next equation and we're gonna go ahead and grab the Y position of our ball and we're gonna minus it from the paddle position Y and then we need to close everything off with a bracket as we're doing math in here so now the other thing we're going to do is we want this relative to the scene and then we'll go ahead since our gravity is like at 500 I'm gonna go ahead and let's just try a velocity of let's try a velocity of let's try a velocity of 1100 since our max is 1200 so we'll try that and see how it works so now that we've done that let's go ahead back and let's try it out see now that we've done everything in the prototype we don't have to touch anything on the scene so now as you see we're getting a nice little kick there 
from our ball and we're actually getting some you know sideways stuff and you know it's pretty good I think I need more let's go ahead into the ball and let's go ahead and increase this to 1200 and let's go ahead and increase this a little bit we'll increase this to 1400 and a lot of times it's just experimentation and getting everything kind of right there we go now we've got a nice you know we're getting a good um, flow here and we could also go into our ball actor here and we could also increase the bounciness a bit let's increase that to 1.2 and see if we don't get a little more action here there we go now we've got a nice bounce we're getting good height uh, it's giving us some good action here and there we go so as you see a lot of times with the with the physics you just go in and tweak it a little bit here a little bit there just to find that right kind of equilibrium for your stuff and it's a little bit of experimentation um, to just get everything right and there's a lot more that you can do in the physics engine to kind of you know get it all with drag and different things like that but as you learn and as you experiment in game salad you know you grow this is something that you you know take some time to learn and uh, but it's doable you can do it you can uh, figure this out it just it's how much effort you willing to put into it I don't want you to be feel overwhelmed by any of this just go along with the flow with the template enjoy the fun follow along with me and uh, we're almost done with our game here so now we've got the physics in here we've got the ball going we've got good bounce we've got uh, good speed uh, we've got really everything in our physics under control we've learned how to make some attributes and stuff and so now in our in our next video which will probably be the last video the second to the last and the last one we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, game design and 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 um, and going forward with game salad um, we're gonna go ahead in and we'll start working with destroying our bricks and destroying the ball and respawning it and actually charting a score you can find me on the forums under the name lost oasis games this is Dave the guru I'll see you in the next video